Hey, welcome to the Draft Academy. My name is Mike, and in this video, I'm gonna be giving you a high-level overview of how the internet actually works. So we're gonna take a look at how data flows from your device to other people's devices or someone's server and then back again. Now, the first thing that we need to do is take a look at some fun Wi-Fi names. So I'm sure you've seen a bunch of these silly Wi-Fi names out in the wild. Things like the Bat Cave, Bill Y, the Science Fi. Abraham Linksys is a personal favorite of mine. And then obviously if you have a phone with hotspots, drop it like it's hotspot. You'll see that the second that the power goes out anywhere. Also some fun little facts. So a bonus cat fact, at one point over 15% of internet traffic was believed to be cat videos. I guarantee you that was more towards the beginning of the internet. Uh, a man actually printed out Wikipedia, all 7,000 volumes, and he called it art. The trees called it revenge. And finally, the global internet traffic dropped by 40% once Google went down for five minutes. And actually, nowadays, it's funny because there's a lot of websites like that. Uh, Netflix is one, Google one, Google's one, obviously, Facebook, uh, OpenAI now with ChatGPT. These are like these websites that take up so much of the internet traffic that when they go down, everybody starts freaking out. So let's take a look at how the internet actually works. Now, a lot of people think about, when they think about the internet, a cloud, but it's actually more like a spider web. So the internet is a spider web that goes all across the globe. And this is one of the cool things about the internet is it's basically connected by wires. So nowadays we actually have things like Starlink, where, uh, or satellite internet, where you can connect to a uh, satellite that's orbiting around the earth. But uh, a lot of the internet traffic that goes around the world is connected via these wires. And those wires can live on the phone lines. So like those telephone uh, lines, you know, where we get power, they also run a lot of times wires where all your internet traffic goes. And then in addition to that, there's also a lot of internet traffic that goes uh, underneath the ocean. So here I have a map of all of the undersea wires and you can see they connect all of the continents on the earth. So each one of these little colored lines is like a actual physical wire that's a lot of times they're just like laid down on the actual uh, floor of the ocean, but they, they route traffic across the entire world. And the traffic that goes through all those wires, it's pretty much moving at the speed of light. So it's moving super, super fast. That's how you're able to have like video chat conversations with people across the other side of the globe. So a lot of people don't know that like internet's actually running underneath the ocean. And you can think of the internet a lot like the mail system. So in the mail system, if we wanna send a letter from one house to another house, we have to go through the postal service, right? So different countries have different postal services, but generally it's the same idea, which is that you live in a house, so you have an address, and then the other person has an address, and then you send the letter through the postal service. So we have recipient one has an address, recipient two has an address, and I'm spelling some of these wrong. <laughs> I like to kind of take notes uh, as I'm filming these videos because it helps me to um, structure the information in my head. And then the information passes through the postal service. So it's pretty much the same exact system with the internet, just a little bit more complicated because we have to deal with computers and there's a lot more computers that are connected. So when we have a computer, each computer has an IP address. And this is exactly like the address that you have at your house. Uh, the only difference is instead of having like the street name and the postal code and uh, the country, instead we have uh, these IP addresses are basically just uh, numbers. So it's a section of four different numbers. So in this case, 192.134.6.90, this one has another one. And these addresses identify your computer uniquely on the internet. And the internet is just this connected web, like I said, a spider web of all of these different computers. So just like in the postal service, you would send a letter and that letter would then move through and then it would go to the recipient on the internet. Instead of sending letters, we send packets of information. So if I wanna send a letter or if, or if I wanna send a message or if I wanna send like an image or a file, what my computer would do is it would take that, it would break it up into a bunch of these little packets and then it would send it. And instead of sending it over the postal service, and we would actually send it over uh, this protocol. And the protocol is kind of like how you, when you send a letter, like the, the protocol for postal services is 
and actually we can go back to that slide, is you have a letter and then you write the uh, recipient's address and, and everything on there and then you'd write the return address and then you'd have to put a stamp on it. Instead on the internet, we have these packets and it's kind of the same thing where they have an address of where they're going, they have like this header that describes everything about them and the message or the image or whatever that you're sending would be broken up into you know dozens or hundreds of these packets and then it would be sent according to this TCP IP protocol. And the way that that happens is it actually goes through a system of what are called routers. And a router, you can think of it as like a server or like a computer, and these are generally run by uh, internet service providers. You also probably have a router in your house. There could be like tens or hundreds of these routers, probably not hundreds, but there's a bunch of these different routers that all of the packets of information that your computer sends have to get uh, run through. So you would send a piece of information and it would go to your router that you have in your house. And then that router would send it to your internet service provider. And they would also have another router or a switch or they would have some sort of a device that would take that in. And then it would figure out, you know, according to this TCP IP protocol that we talked about uh, where the information needs to go. And then the information would then get to the recipient. It would come back through all of these different routers and then back to you. So the routers, you could think of them as like post offices, right? In If we're sending a letter, it goes to your local post or it goes to your mailbox, then it goes to your local post office and then it might go to like some national one or whatever. And then the return letter would come back in that same way. So let's talk real quick then about how your browser actually does this. So this is generally how people are connecting to the internet is through an internet browser. And let's say I was going to google.com. Well, the first thing that we need to do is we need to take the name google.com and we need to translate it into something that the computer can understand, which is these IP addresses, right? So this is where we have a DNS or a domain name system, domain name server. Um, and the domain name server or the domain name system would translate this address like google.com, which is human readable, right? It has an actual name that we can remember and it would translate it into one of these IP addresses, which is hard to remember. Like imagine that anytime you wanted to go to a website, you had to have one of these addresses memorized, right? 167.335. whatever. It's almost impossible for human beings to remember that stuff. Uh, just like if you have uh, a friend that you want to send a letter to, you're not necessarily going to memorize their street address. You would have it written down in like a contacts book. Well, the DNS is a lot like the contacts book, right? So you go in there and you say, okay, what is their name? I know their name. And then you would match their name with their address. It's the same thing. So Google is the name and then we would match it with the address. So the domain name system would translate that bring it back to the browser and then we would send that off to the router which would then go through your internet service provider and then you'd be able to find out where to send all those messages. So that's a basic overview of how data is transmitted on the internet. Hopefully now you have a pretty good understanding of how all that works. So what I wanna do is actually show you a little demo and we're gonna take a look at how we can see this process in action and we'll do this with google.com. So I'm over here in my terminal, and if you're on a Mac, you can just open up, I think it's just terminal, just like that. And then if you're on Windows, it's called the command prompt. So what we can do is we can actually trace the uh, traffic or we can trace the uh, network request that we're making as it goes. So what I can do is I can say trace route. And if you're on Mac, it's trace route. If you're on Windows, it's trace RT, I think. And then you just type in the domain name that you want to get. And then in here, what it's going to do is it's going to print out all of the different routers or all the different hops that it had to make to get to Google. So here is 10.0.0.1. That's like my local system. And then we move over here. This is probably my router. This is like my internet service provider. You can see it's Comcast. And then it just sort of jumps through all of these different uh, routers. And then it goes out to the internet that would then go to Google and then Google should come back to me and we'd be able to see like exactly how all of this works. So you can see here all the different hops that this made and it's going out to the internet to do all of that. Another thing that we can do is take a look at how the DNS works. So the um, we can say NS lookup and just google.com. And then over here, you'll see we translated the name google.com into this 
IP address. So that's going to do it for this video. Hopefully now you have a better understanding of how the internet works. That's going to do it for me. So leave a like and comment if you enjoyed the video and otherwise I'll see you in the next one.